let's start that again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing my rendition of the mid-year freak out book tag because I want to do some of the questions that are in this tag but I also kind of don't have answers to some of them so I'm just kind of like picking and choosing what questions to do and kind of just let's just have a chit chat of like how my reading has been so far this year because we are halfway through the year so it's time to kind of accumulate my thoughts of the books I've read so far. So a bit of background about me is I tend to read about 50 books a year give or take a few books and this year because of lockdown and our very unforeseen circumstances I've actually managed to read 45 books to date and so I'm absolutely smashing my Goodreads goal. So I have a lot of books that I've loved this year, a lot of books that have disappointed me so I'm just going to kind of, we'll have a casual chat about my reading so far this year. Kind of getting prompts from the mid-year book freak out tag but kind of just casually chit-chatting about the books that I've read. So let's get started. The first question so far and one that I do want to actually answer because it's probably the one that you're all most interested in is the best books I've read so far this year and it does kind of state to only name one but I'm kind of finding it difficult to narrow it down to just one so I'm gonna run off a few for you. There's a dystopian sci-fi, there's a fantasy and there's a couple of contemporaries in there for you because I'm a contemporary lover so of course I have to mention a contemporary but the first book that first came to mind is Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. This book is about a world where you can't die of natural causes anymore. You can't die in a car crash, you can't die of natural causes like diseases and all these sorts of things and it follows, the first book I follows two characters who go on an apprenticeship for a year to become um, Scythes and basically Scythes are there to maintain the world population by gleaning people and basically the story is just about these two young people who become Scythes and Thunderhead is a sequel to that and when I first read it in 2015 I didn't enjoy it because I was on such a high from Scythe because I loved it so much that Thunderhead felt like a disappointment to me but when The Toll came out this year I decided to reread both Scythe and Thunderhead before reading The Toll and I'm so glad I did because Thunderhead the second time round was a million times better and it's now like my favourite book of that series and I can't believe that when I first read it I didn't love it because this book is amazing <laughs> Like, the continuation is just incredible of where Neil Schusterman develops the world, develops the characters, develops the story. It's just brilliant. So this is definitely one of my favourite books of the year so far, even though it's kind of a cheat because I've already read it and this was a reread. But to think that it went from like a three star read for me to a like five star, now one of my favourite books of all time, I think it deserves a call out. So definitely A Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman reaches my top book so far of the year. The second book that is also one of my favourites is also a sequel but don't worry I hadn't, this isn't a reread, I hadn't read it already. And that's Heart Betrayal which is the second book in the Remnant Chronicle series by Mary E. Pearson and I'd read Kiss of Deception which is the first book. I want to say in like 2016, having had it on my shelf for two years, I got it as a Christmas present in 2014, I just hadn't read it. But I decided to give it a go, reread it and read the rest of the series because I did really enjoy The Kiss of Deception the first time I read it. Reread that first book and loved it and I was like, I need the rest. So I brought the other two books and I read both of the last two books this year and oh my god, The Heart of Betrayal is again another amazing sequel and people keep saying like second book syndrome like it's always like the middle ground book it's not as good as the first or the third but this year is proving me wrong and there is, has been no second book syndrome for me so if you didn't know the kiss of deception follows a princess who runs away on her wedding day and you follow three perspectives the princess the assassin sent to kill her and the prince that she was meant to marry and the reader throughout the book you don't know which perspective is which between the prince and the assassin and it basically just follows her journey and obviously the heart betrayal is a continuation of this and oh my god it's one of my favorite series of all time and this book is <laughs> my favorite book of the series so that has to give a shout out and because i am a contemporary lover and i tend to read like 90 percent contemporary i couldn't 
not include a contemporary in one of my favourites so far. And this is Birthday by Meredith Rosso. I literally heard of this book at the beginning of the year and read it in January and it's still one of my favourite books of the year. This is about two boys and you follow their love story throughout 18 years. They've known each other since birth and you basically follow their journey into when they turn 18 but every single year you only follow them on their birthday. So the main character Morgan, although you get both perspectives, you do kind of follow mainly Morgan's perspective. Um, is a boy but really really wants to be a girl. So you basically follow his journey in discovering himself, um, coming out and all this sort of stuff and it's just a really really heartwarming story and I think it hits some really really great topics and this book just captured my heart. The characters were incredible, it was so well written, I think the topics were really well discussed. So this book plus the spine edge. So gorgeous. This book is definitely one of my favourites of the year so far. Now we go, the next question is the best sequel and I've kind of mentioned two sequels that are my favourites so far. So we're going to speed past that question. And then the third question is a new release you haven't read yet but really excited to. And that's The Love Square by Laura James Williams. I'll put a picture either side of my head so you can kind of see the front cover. But I read R Stop by the same author this year and it is also one of my favourite books of the year so far. I listened to this on audiobook and I really really enjoyed the experience so I picked up a physical. So I do kind of want to reread it in physical format just to see the difference because it is dual perspective. So we had two narrators in the audiobook. I just want to see how like how well it reads rather to how well it like I listened to it. But this is basically about two people and I always forget characters' names even though characters are my favourite part of books. <laughs> Nadia and Daniel basically follows their journey as they kind of like meet each other but they only ever see each other on the same train that they commute on every single day in the London Underground. So it's kind of cool to read like a un London Underground story because I live on the outskirts of London and tend to take the London Underground a lot. So it's kind of cool to see that sort of love story develop on a London Underground. And they communicate by writing each other notes in this like newspaper article where people can like write in and like have like tube crushes. So their like relationship evolves and like develops through this like article sort of thing that they both write into. And they try and meet up and they always kind of miss each other and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, it's just a really cute romancy read and I highly recommend it. And I did really, really enjoy this story by Laura Jane Williams, so I'm excited to read her new book coming out very soon. I think it's July, which is The Love Square. So that's that question. Moving swiftly on is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And that, my friends, is In Case You Missed It by Lindsay Kalk. I don't own it yet because it hasn't come out, but it comes out in like two or three weeks. It comes out in July, so I'm very excited for it. Lindsay Kalk is the author of the I Heart series, and it starts with the first book of I Heart New York. It is an eight book series that follows a girl called Angela who finds out her fiance or boyfriend has been cheating her been cheating on her for 10 years so she runs away to New York and starts her whole new life in New York finds out finds new best friends finds a new job and just basically thrives in this New York City and it's all about like her journey and her journey literally spans across eight books the last book have coming out just this past year and you know me I'm a sucker for good characters and this whole series just has crazy good characters and obviously the first book was written a very long time ago so Lindsay Kelk and I think it was her debut book so her writing has progressed and has got better since so if you do give the first book a try please bear that in mind that it was her first book and it was written quite a long time ago but it's just a fun quick light-hearted good romancy book with really good friendships really good relationships really cool locations each book is set in a different country and I just love Lindsay Kelk. Um, I have met her. I've kind of gone off on a tangent, but basically Lindsay Kelk is one of my favourite authors because I've binged this eight book series. And I have met her, and I met her a couple of years ago at a book signing, along with Giovanna Fletcher. Who, if you haven't seen my booktube newbie tag, you know that I met Giovanna Fletcher and got my book signed by her. Lindsay Kelk was at the same book signing. 
So I've met her and she's just the most loveliest, bubbliest person. Um, so I'm very, very excited to read her new book, which is coming out very soon, which is In Case You Missed It. And I don't know anything about it because I don't want to know anything about it because it's Lindsay Kelk and I know that she's going to just write an incredible story. And she keeps tweeting that it's her favourite book that she's written today. So she's setting herself a high bar and I'm going to make her earn it. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited to read that. And it's currently in my Waterstones shopping basket on a pre-order because I just want it as soon as it comes out. So I'm really excited for that one. And then my biggest disappointment so far this year, which is number question five or something, um, it's kind of a really sad one because the other book that I read by this author is one of my favourite books of all time. Like it easily comes into like my top books, like top 10 or 20 books of all time or whatever. And that book's Dark Matter. So when I read Recursion by Blake Crouch, I was so excited for it. But it really disappointed me. I just... I didn't like the story, I found it a bit too scientific for me. I kind of didn't follow along when it got got to that stage and I just, I don't really re remember much about it and I only read it like two months ago. I'm just really disappointed, there's not much to say about this because I don't really remember anything but I kind of want to keep it because it matches, <laughs> because it matches Dark Matter but I do think I'm going to have to get rid of it because I just, it just didn't live up to the expectations I had because Dark Matter was so good and because I love Dark Matter so much I had high expectations for this one and it just didn't live up to it. What I can remember is the whole premise of this book is about being able to relive the same life but changing the ending or changing an aspect of that life to be able to change the ending and it's all about this main character who figures out how to do this um, and he just lives like loads of different lives. Basically kind of all I can remember about it. I'm not really giving it great vibes because I didn't really enjoy it. But I would give it a go because I do know some people actually prefer Recursion to Dark Matter. I think it's just personal preference and for me it just didn't live up to Dark Matter for me. So that's my biggest disappointment of 2020 so far. Hopefully I don't have any more. <laughs> and then biggest surprise book wise for me. I think I'm going to have to repeat a book because that book would be Thunderhead. It's just the reason it was such a big surprise is because I had already read it two years ago and I just wasn't a massive fan of it but rereading it this year I must have just been in a really good mindset to read that book and I absolutely loved it so it's a bigger surprise because I just wasn't expecting to like it. I was, we don't want to repeat books. I will mention another book that did surprise me and that's Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. Yeah, Jennifer Matthew. The reason this one surprised me is because I've had it basically on my shelf since its release, which I don't even know when it was, but I want to say a good couple of years ago. 2017 this came out. So yeah, it's been on my shelves for a, two or three years, and I've tried to read it about three times, all times during like reading stunts, because contemporaries tend to get me out of reading stunts. So I've always kind of like read it to try and get out of a reading slump but it's never done the trick. But then during the owls in April, I had to read a book beginning with M. This was like the only book on my bookshelf that began with M. So I decided to give it another go and my golly gosh, <laughs> and my God, it just surprised me because I was like, where was this book when I wanted to read it like three or four times ago? This book was really, really good basically follows Vivian who starts a feminist zine or magazine and basically starts a feminist movement in her high school um, inspired by her mum who was a very strong feminist back in her day and had held protests and all this sort of stuff so she was very inspired by her mum so she started this zine and she basically just fights for what's right in her high school um, with a group of girls that become the Moxie Gang and the caption is Moxie Girls Fight Back and it's all about feminist and girl power so if you're looking for a really strong female lead in a wire contemporary I highly highly recommend this one. And then I don't kind of do fictional crushes like I find characters like Swoonworthy and all that sort of stuff but there's not one that I like really love and would like I think I've got past the stage, I'm 23 now, I just had my birthday on Friday. If you didn't see my birthday vlog, I will leave it down below. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of past the stage where I read books and I'm like, ooh, that's a really good fictional crush. But fictional characters, on the other hand, if you didn't know, because I think I keep saying it, I fucking love characters. <laughs> No, I really, really enjoy characters in books, and if the plot's alright, the writing's a bit meh, but if the characters are good, I'll probably love the book. Um, so my favourite characters so far this year, that I just want to read more and more and more of, but there's no more content out there for me to read, is Nick and Charlie. Nick and Charlie, I got it right. <laughs> the right way around that time. Um, which... These two characters are created by Alice Osman, who is well known for Radio Silence, Solitaire, which is where Nick and Charlie first come into play, is in her Solitaire um, book, and then she has a couple of spin-off novellas that feature Nick and Charlie, which I have read, which include Nick and Charlie and This Winter, but my favourite content for Nick and Charlie does have to be the Heartstopper graphic novel series, and yes, I have read all three. One and three, ten, like, are my favourite, I think. Three was just so, so good. Um, but if you didn't know, uh, Nick and Charlie Heartstopper is basically about two boys. Um, Nick doesn't know his sexuality and he's trying to figure it out. But Charlie was outed at high school, so he's openly gay. So Nick and Charlie form a friendship that kind of evolves into something more and it's just very very cute and because it's graphic novel it's so quick and easy to read and the style is very very sweet. There's actually a Heartstopper colouring book and I kind of want it because that's the literally the only new content from Nick and Charlie that I'll be able to get my hands on until volume 4 comes out which I think is later this year so I'm very very excited for that but yeah Nick and Charlie definitely have, definitely have to be my favourite characters that I've read about this year on par with the Kiss of Deception characters because my golly gosh I could read more about Caden, Raph and Leah every single day of my life so yeah the next question is a book that made you cry I haven't cried reading and I barely ever do cry reading I think the last time I cried reading a book was Always and Forever Lara Jean by Jenny Han and that was probably about three years ago I just find it really hard to cry reading books which is kind of good because then my pages never get damaged um but yeah never had a book to really make me cry apart from the one I just mentioned and then a book that makes me happy any book that I've loved and already mentioned this year has made me happy and I did just read I finished it last night The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta that book was so good and I really really highly recommend you read it it's about a black teenager who discovers the drag society at his university and how he becomes himself because he's found drag and it's like his outlet and it's all written in verse and there's some really really powerful poems in there that like feel like their own but is also widely part of this book and it's so well written the topics are so well spoken about and I highly recommend you go check it out so that's that one and I'll I'll say that one's the one book that's made me happy because that was a very good read and I really enjoyed that one. The next question is favourite book to movie adaptation and to be fair because of the world climate right now I don't think many books are being turned into movies there's not much news around that at the minute but a movie that has come out this year that was based on a book I don't know when the book was originally released but the film came out at the very beginning of this year in the UK I know it came out in America in December of 2019 but in the UK it was in cinemas for us in January and that's Just Mercy which follows a character called Johnny D who lives in a small rural American town in Alabama and is accused of murdering a white teenage girl like wrongly accused of murdering this white teenage girl and is sent sentenced to death and is on death row and it follows this lawyer who gives out free services for people who can't afford lawyers. This lawyer tries to like fight their case and get them out of death row for wrongly accused causes and this one follows Johnny D and it's just so hard hitting, so crucial to watch or read right now because of the current Black Lives Matter movement which if you can, if you haven't already, there's links below 
and there always will be links below to help support the Black Lives Matter movement in my description. So please go check the link, but I highly, highly recommend you educate yourself more by reading books like The Black Flamingo, like watching films like Just Mercy, and there are so many more recommendations out there for you to educate yourself further and just make this change for good. Let's not let it pass us by this time. We need to keep acting and keep fighting on this. So yeah, The Black Flamingo and Just Mercy. Highly recommend both of them. I'm the last question I wanna answer in this tag is six books that you want to read in the next six months of 2020 that are left. The first one is With a Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Yeah, Elizabeth Acevedo. I don't know much about this but I've heard it be really really highly praised on booktube so I really want to get to it soon. I know it did come out last year so I'm a bit late on the bandwagon but it's about time I got to it and look at her eyebrows. I want eyebrows like that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited about this one. All I know is that it's about a character who wants to be a chef. And I'm from a very chefy family, both my parents are chefs, so this one really, really highly intrigues me. Then the next book I want to get to is The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. I don't know much about this, I do tend to pick books up based on booktube hype. I am one of those girls. <laughs> but I just recently read the back and it sounds really, really intriguing and I'll read it for you now. When Jack meets Kate at a party, he knows he's falling hard. It is almost happily ever after until six months later Kate dies and this love story should end there. But Kate's death sends Jack back in time to the moment they first met, giving him the chance to try and save her this time. When a choice he makes turns deadly for someone else, Jack has to work out what he's willing to do and let go to save the people he loves. Like, how good does that sound? I'm really, really excited to get to this one and I want to get to it soon. So, that's the second book I want to get to, hopefully in July. Um, another book that I want to get to, rolling off the same vibe as Nick and Charlie, it's a, the latest release by Alice Oldsman, which is Loveless. Cover here or here. Don't know much about this one, but I do because I love the characters that Alice Oldsman does create. I just want to pick up her latest release. And then the last book I want to mention is a new release from one of my favourite autobi authors, which is Lisa Williamson. And she is most commonly known for her book The Art of Being Normal, which I absolutely love and it's up here. <laughs> but yeah, she's an autobi author for me and I do tend to read all her books in like 24 hours or in one sitting. I just love her stories, I love her characters. So I, her next book I'm very, very excited for, and it's First Day of My Life, Here or Here. Once again, I know nothing about it because it's just an author that I always buy her books and always support her. So that's it. There's a few, there's obviously way more books I want to get to, and because I am smashing my Goodreads goal this year, I do kind of want to get to 100 books now rather than 50, just to push myself harder and just try and do something that I know I'll never ever be able to do probably in the rest of my life with other commitments and stuff that are going to start popping back up after this pandemic is over. So that's it, that was kind of the mid-year freak out book tag but kind of just having a bit of a catch up with you guys on the first half of my year because I have just started so none of you have known what I've been reading this year. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight in my reading taste, what I like to read and if you have any recommendations and suggestions of books you think I'll like, please leave them down below. But that's it. If you like what you saw and you like what you heard, please give this video a like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.